G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. If you missed part two of the uh, long delayed step clamps, there's a link up there now, you can go watch that first. Now in this video, I'm going to end the suspense that some of you have been uh, suffering from and uh, get on with a little project that I said I had in mind. So follow me over there, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Alrighty, so I challenge you all to uh, have a think about what it was I might be going to make out of this and from memory only one viewer got it right and to put you out of your misery I'm going to try and make a rotary table out of this. Now the reason for trying to use this to make a rotary table is in my mind it really needs to be cast iron and I kept thinking where the hell am I going to get a lump, a round lump of cast iron from to make a rotary table out of and then in the end I decided these things are cast iron. Uh, unfortunately, this is the cheapest one I could lay my hands on, and it's uh, either chrome or nickel plated, so I'm going to have to get all that off there. Now, I can't fit this in the lathe, I can't grip it around the outside, it's too big. So, the only way I can grip it is to grip it in the center, outwards out in the center. My That hole there is too small, so I'm going to get a chance to have a crack at my uh, boring head that I make. And I'll get a chance to use uh, my step clamps that I just made. But I'll hold it all down while I do it. So we'll go and set it up in the middle and we'll get started. Alrighty, so I've made one little fine test cut down there. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to cut through uh, this coating down through there. It sounds pretty hard. But anyway, we'll have another cut. Get down a bit closer. Pretty damn noisy. There's enough clearance on the back of that. Should be. But anyway, I've got to take uh, upwards of, open it up about six millimeters to about 36 and a half. So uh, I'll bring you a little, bring you back and I'll get a bit closer to that because this, I'm going to have to take my time with this because it's so noisy. Well, I took a really heavy cut before and it was a lot quieter. I thought oh, I might put a new tip in it and just see how it goes. The new tip was even louder. It's unbelievable. It might be just about where I want to be here. No, not quite. Just a little tiny bit more, but it, to be honest, I don't know. I have too much more adjustment left in this. I'm really worried about how much noise this is making. But a little doors closed. Well, I haven't got this little door on the side shut, but oh, well, you wouldn't believe it. Not hard up against that shoulder there now. God, well, I'll take that tool out, and move it, and reposition it. Alrighty, that should be that. But the worst part about it is, I've got another one of these things coming and I'm going to have to do this again. Yeah, that'll do me. Alrighty, so we'll get it out of there and put it in the lathe and turn all this crap off it. Well viewers, here's a lesson learned. I didn't actually check to see how central this hole was. And uh, believe me, it's nothing like it's centred. Have a look at this. Anyway, we'll just have to machine it all off. It's got to come down to, uh, that's a bit wider than the table at the moment, so I've got to machine it down to the width of the table. Now, that's only got to hold it by about 10 millimetres in there, and uh, I'm not prepared to uh, to try and um, <laughs> keep it there with that, so I've machined this up, push up the inside of there, I'll hold it in. In there. I don't really give a shit about this. Nah, get out of here. Too neat to Let me machine all this lip here off, anyways. Look, look at it. Oh my god. I'm half out of an hippie hippie shake shake. Well, 
might have to put a different tool in there and uh, so I can get it around come at it this way a bit more it's taking too deep a cut at that speed and it's not liking it much oh, I'll bring you back my sort of out got a left handed version of that tool out in there seems to be doing the job but I'm just looking at that I've cut a fair bit off there already either this coating is really thick or this isn't cast on at all I claimed it was it might be steel I bloody hope not anyway keep going Damn, spraying that everywhere it is it that's not looking good. That doesn't look like cast iron to me. Is it getting darker yet? No, we're not. Oh, there's an awful lot to come off this. I'll bring you back later. I've got to say, it's not liking this. It's throwing this damn stuff everywhere. It's really fine. It's uh, kind of coming off like cast iron, but it doesn't look like it. Very rough, because this, like I said the other day, this thing doesn't like running for long periods at uh, low revs. So I think I'll uh, call it quits for the day and let it cool down, have a go, another go tomorrow. There's still an awful lot to come off this. Get it down to one diameter. But anyway, stick with it. Well, viewers, the doubts I had in my head about whether this thing was cast on or not are well and truly passed. It's definitely cast on. I'm having a hell of a time turning this. I've spent over a period of four hours today just getting it down to that. And I still have around 10 millimetres to get off the diameter of this. And it's going to take me a couple of days, I think, because I can't get more than a couple of passes across it before the motor overheats and then starts going crazy. Uh, I've even had to pull the uh, cover off the end, let some air in there, and then after a few passes, I have to spin this around, point the fan at it, desk fan, and run it for a while to cool it down before it come back and take another couple of passes. But, oh, Jesus, I think this is going to be a long series. I want to know whose idea it was to start machining cast iron. Have a go at this. It is just everywhere. But, anyway, it's taken... Uh, Literally four days. I started this last Friday. It's now Monday. And I've finally got this down to the diameter I want it to be at. But I can't get a decent finish on here because it's still still so out of balance. Uh, wobbling around everywhere. Anyway, I've been chewing through tips like there's no tomorrow. But I've got some of my ordered uh, Saturday morning. It should have been here yesterday. But we'll be here later this afternoon with a bit of luck. Much higher grade tips. And they're only a 0.2 radius tip and they get through this chrome much better but I had somebody to run out. Anyway, so until they arrive, that's it. Well viewers, this is really starting to drag on but these new tips are, are proven that the duck's nuts or duck's guts, depends on where you come from. Uh, they're actually a ground tip and I think they're a Mitsubishi, I'm not entirely sure. It's a Japanese tip, not a cheap Chinese tip. Well I only paid 150 baht for 10 of them, so that's that's cheap. Anyway, uh, I've been ploughing away at this this morning, this side, to take, I don't know, quite a bit off it. But I've still got maybe two and a half to three millimetres to go to get rid of this out of here. Because I want to make this side completely flat. And I can't get all the way to the centre because I'm running into the uh, live centre. And I played around with the tool length and stick out and all the rest of it. If I can get all the way in there, I can't get all the way back out. I've got nothing done yesterday. I woke up yesterday morning feeling like death warmed up. My wife's been battling what turned out to be the flu for a week. And then my, my Aussie mate's daughter's whose birthday party we went to on Saturday night has got COVID. So I start to wonder if I had the flu or COVID. But anyway, turns out that because I was being a bit stupid machining this stuff without a mask, I reckon I was breathing in all this dust from this. I could actually taste it in my mouth at one stage there on Monday. It's now Wednesday. And I've also sorted out being able to machine this for longer. It's not the motor, even the motor gets hot. It's the little uh, circuit board and the Chinese speed controller. It, it overheats because I'm loading it up too much. A good thing about these tips is it doesn't load it up quite so much and I'm able to take 0.2 and even 0.25 cuts across here, which means I'm getting through it faster. And I can usually get two passes out of it before it starts to warm up. And then I sorted, it, sorted that out by, I just flip open the cabinet, give the, the board a bit of a hit with some prestige just to cool it quickly, and then give it a five minutes with the fan blowing in there. And then I can get back into it and get another two passes out of it. So this has only taken me oh, an hour or so this morning to knock most of this off. So that'll help speed things up. I think this thing is at the absolute limits of this poor little machine. Alrighty, so... Uh... After the best part of a week, I'm surely hoping this is going to be the last pass across here. Well, let's get the bit out of control. 
and that's still not completely gone. Unbelievable. I'm a bit dirty, I've lost probably the best part of 5mm, or so I will have by the time I square this all up. But anyway, that's life. I better let this cool down and have another crack. Well, there we have it. Finally finished this side. Uh, I, I think when I flip it over, all I'm going to do on the back side is clean up that outside rim and the inside bit. But I want to get rid of all that uh, lettering and numbering in the back, but I think I'll just take it with a grinder and get rid of that because it just, just hates that uh, interference cut on the way through. You can still see the 5kg written in there, which is unbelievable. But anyway, uh, finish is not the best, but I want to fly cut this when I'm, uh, once I've got the table all finished. Alrighty, so I've got to say that uh, getting in there and grinding them off was, uh, I think, a smart move because it didn't take that long to knock them off. And it didn't take long to uh, clean these two surfaces here up. Uh, so, next cab off the ring, and I've polished this up a bit. So, what I'm going to do now is set up my uh, brake and everything on it, the spindle brake. I'm going to scribe 360 lines around the outside of this, which will take a while. So, I won't make you sit through that, I'll show you when I'm done. Well, that's 36 10 degree marks and my shoulder, elbow and back are saying enough. So I think I'll leave the rest till tomorrow. Well, thank God that's finished. Maybe do have the flu because I feel like crap today. I don't really feel like doing this. And this is just disgusting. It is, uh, if you'll pardon the pun, a complete cluster. Because these marks are all over the place like a mad woman. Shit, if again you'll excuse the pun. Anyway, that's them done. Um, like this one here is just absolute rubbish. So I think these one degree marks can be best described as advisory or uh, decorative. But anyway, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity right now to thank my patrons. Uh, their support is, uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you'd like to become a patron, uh, there's a link down in the description. You can you know, sign up over there. Cost me a couple of dollars every month and it'll help me out. Help me keep this thing alive and well, uh, if, even if I'm not alive and well. Uh, if you don't want to be a patron, there's, uh, as always, buy me a coffee. There's a link for that down there in the, in the description as well. Or you can uh, click on that thanks button down there and toss me a couple of dollars there. If you've been enjoying this up until now, how about giving it a great big thumbs up and we'll keep going. All right, so uh, what I want to do now is I've only been working to a line here because there wasn't much room down here to put a clamp on. So I'm just going to flip this tool back over. That's the uh, little point two radius tip in there, turn sideways. I'm just going to flip it over and come in here with it and just put a little groove in there just to tidy up the ends of those lines a little bit and then I want to put a three millimeter groove up in the center up here for clamping purposes. Well, that's not going well, is it? I'm going to try uh, 
lowering that tool a little bit, I think. Well, let's try something else. That horrible noise you can hear is uh, I haven't taken the uh, the disc brake off the back yet and I can't get it out, it's stuck in there. So I've got to wait till I get this out to drive it through from the front. Anyway. This is not going well at all. I'm going to have to take this thing off here and get that thing out because it's making hideous noises. Well viewers, not for a second did I think that it would be easy to put that groove in there. and uh, but. I never thought it'd be as hard as it bloody well was. Anyway, it kind of looks okay. It's a little bit uh, stuck in a bit in there, but I can't get it in any further, and I don't want to be breaking tools and everything. So that's going to have to do for uh, this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, if you did, give it a great big thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you next week for part two when we make the base to sit this thing on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.